Hey guys, so we are on 3.6, the chain rule. Now out of all the derivative rules, like we have power rule, product rule, quotient rule, this one is the biggest one. This one is the most important. Okay, so, and this is your notes for day one. Okay, this is huge. Now, um, these notes are gonna be kinda out of order. There's gonna be some things that we're gonna cut out of here, but um, just follow along as best you can. The attachment was already there, so um, either copy it down or print it out if you can. All right, so we use the chain rule to take derivatives of functions that are composite functions. What do I mean by that? I mean a composition of functions. Oh, my left-handedness strikes again. I'm talking about a composition of functions. Okay? So you've seen it look like this, like f of g of x where you substitute in the, a g of x function into the f of x function, so plugging in one function into another, or sometimes you see it as the fog, fog of x, which means the same thing, f of g of x. Okay, so you've seen it in those two formats. Um, let's see, you saw it in Math 3 a little bit, and you also saw it in Math 2. That's where you learned it. All right, here we go. So the next part is we have examples. f of x equals sine of x squared. So basically we have two functions going on there. We, oops, we have the overall function, which is the sine. So label these with me. Overall. And then uh, on the inside, I have an x squared. So those are two different functions, a quadratic and a sine, okay? Then for y equals the quantity, 3x plus 1 cubed, we have the overall is a function being cubed. And then on the inside, we have something linear, the 3x plus 1. And then if we have y equals the square root of x squared plus 2x plus 3, overall is the square root. So just trace that square root to show that this is the overall. So that's one function. The function that's being plugged into it on the inside is this quadratic, the x squared plus 2x plus 3. Okay, are you guys with me? I hope you are. All right, so chain rule. I know that this looks kind of crazy. We'll read through it, and I know the notation looks really scary, but it's really not bad at all, okay? Promise. So it says, if f is differentiable at the point g of x and g is differentiable at x, then the composite function f of g of x equals f of g of x is differentiable at x, and the derivative of f of g of x is equal to g of x, or um, the derivative of g of x times the derivative of f of g of x, okay? So what does this mean, basically? So this little piece is gonna mean something. It basically means the derivative of the inside, derivative, oops, I can spell inside correctly. Derivative of the inside times the derivative of the overall times the inside. Okay, so that is what it means. Still confused? That's okay. It'll make sense for sure once we do a problem. We're gonna start off with some easy ones because why would we start off with the hard ones right off the bat? All right, in um, other calculus classes, like when I learned how to do this originally, we used something called U substitution. So, but that gets a little sticky and it's just, it, Mrs. Ardito came up with a, a much easier way and I like the way that she does it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach it the way that she teaches it. I like that way better because this part confused the crap out of me when I did this back in the day. 
So, but I mean, I got it obviously because I'm a math teacher. I made it through calculus and I had to take three different semesters of calculus, all different classes. So I made it, but yeah, sometimes that U substitution stuff gets a little tricky. And if you're going into that upper level math, you'll see it again later and you'll have to do it. But for right now, we're just starting out. It's calculus AB, it's okay to do it this way. All right, so example one, we're gonna find the dy dx for y equals x squared plus one quantity cubed. So let's identify the overall and the inside. That's the first thing we gotta do. So overall, it's to the third power. Okay. On the inside, we have x squared plus one. So those are my two separate functions, basically kind of like my f of x and my g of x, okay, so to speak. All right, so let's work on this. It says that we need to take the derivative of the inside, okay? Well, the inside is x squared plus one. So y prime equals, the derivative of x squared plus one, we'll just use power rule, is two x. And then it says times the derivative of the outside. So the derivative of the outside, well, that means that we have to take that three and drop it down. So we'll have three. We'll have stuff in parentheses, but remember that power of three goes down one, so we have to subtract one, and now it's a two. And then on the inside, it just says inside. So it's just itself, x squared plus one. So the derivative of the inside times the derivative of the overall times whatever's on the inside. Okay, so we just have to clean that up a little bit. So, and by a little bit, all we gotta do is multiply the two x times the three out front there. So that gives us six x times the quantity x squared plus one quantity squared. And you don't need to multiply that out. We can be done right here. So it's really not that bad once you get the hang of it, but you gotta try them out. Okay, I'll see if I can find a website or something online where you could practice these and get immediate feedback. I'm trying to see if I can get you guys an IXL account. We'll find out. Okay, all right, next one. So for the next one, I'm gonna bring down the problem up here. Y equals three X plus one quantity cubed. Okay, so I'm just gonna write it. Okay. All right, so what is the overall? Well, the overall is to the third power. And the inside is the three X plus one. Okay, so let's start by when we find the derivative, we take the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside using power rule is just a three times the derivative of the overall, which means we're gonna have to drop that three in the front. And now that exponent drops down to a two because we subtracted one. And then we put the inside back in. Okay, super easy. So, I just have to multiply the three times three, so y prime equals nine times the quantity three x plus one squared, and that's the derivative. So chain rule comes into effect when you have multiple functions within a function and you have to take a derivative. Makes it so you just do it piece by piece and then put it all together. All right, next one. We'll do the sine one over here, the y equal, or f of x equals sine of x squared. Put it over here. All right. So let's take a look at overall. It's the sine. On the inside, it's just the x squared. Okay. So when we do a derivative, f prime of x, we need the derivative of the inside, which is 
2x times the derivative of overall. Well, the derivative of sine is cosine. And then we have to put the inside in there, cosine of x squared. So let's just make that a little bit cleaner. And by cleaner, it's just a 2x cosine of x squared. See, they're really not that bad. Not at all. Okay. And then we'll bring the last one down here. We're not going to do this example, so we can cross this out. And we'll do the y equals the square root of x squared plus 2x plus 3. Okay. Well, the square root, this is our overall. And obviously the x squared plus 2x plus 3, this is my inside. I'll use this pen. So I need to take the derivative of the inside using power rule. That would be 2x plus 2, okay? And then we have to multiply that times the derivative of the overall. Well, we need to basically rewrite the overall. So that would be y equals x squared plus 2x plus 3 to the 1 half. And so when we take that derivative, we have to drop that 1 half in front. So we'll have 1 half. And then 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. And then we put the inside in there. x squared plus 2x plus 3. I know it looks funky, but it's okay. It's okay, it's okay. All right, so when I distribute this 1 half times the 2x plus 2, Notice they all have 2's. So half of 2x is a 1x. Half of 2 is 1. And this quantity, since it's to the negative 1 half power, it's a negative exponent, so I have to drop it like it's hot. And in the denominator, it's a square root, right? So it's to the 1 half power. So x squared plus 2x plus 3. And in calculus, this is the only place where you can leave a radical in the denominator. Math 2, Math 3, we made you rationalize. But in here, it's cool. You can leave it. All right. And that's it. Your homework is a worksheet, and it's certain problems, and it will be attached in the assignment.